is your piston and all your shims and all your pieces. Um, you have a washer and then you have come on off wiggle 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 and you have another little washer section which has two o-rings on it which come I was about to say they come off really easy but unless you're sticking it on there we go so yeah as you can see it's just ridges focus it's just ridges on it um, the o-rings I've still got a little bit of grease in my hands but you don't need a lot on it just a little bit of grease and you can pop that right back in this little section there it's just to push it in there's nothing special quickly dry this o-ring and like I said you know it just rolls right on there they fit really loosely they just kind of flap on and off which is why you have this other washer which kind of sandwiches them uh, smack a little bit of lube on it and then I'm gonna set these two off to the side you need to lube up these things probably not again superstition uh, it might even be bad who knows <laughs> it might cause um, some sort of stiction between the two um, don't know don't care it sandwiches gun shoots and I've not had any problems yet now you got all your shims here uh, there's ten shims ten shims at least mine has 10 shims. I'm hoping everybody else has 10 shims. Um, you have one on each side like that, and the rest are just kind of coned together. Uh, so you're gonna have two like this, and then the rest like that, ding, ding, ding. Four sets like this, and then those two. 10 pieces, nothing you really need to do with them. If you wanted to, you could take each individual one, rub it off, get everything off, and then stick it back on, but I don't. Uh, piston. It's a piston. If you've ever been inside an HPR, you've likely seen one of these pistons. Anyway, quickly rubber down. It has a single O-ring right here. Not much going on. Take a little bit of lube. Roll it around in there. And get a little bit on the shaft again. Dry shafts are always a bad time. So, pick up the stack without exploding them everywhere. Amazingly enough, I didn't do it, which I typically do manage. Um, and just stick this stack back on there. God damn you. There we go. So, it sits like that. And there's two ways of going about putting this thing back together. You can put this one that has the O-rings on it on first. Um, and then that uh, washer on second. Uh, when you do that, when you push it on, as you can see, that little o-ring pushes off um, so uh, yeah that becomes problematic so I'm not going to do that well I've already done it but you can just push that thing on there as a sandwich I think that my camera is actually telling me I'm running out of time which is going to be problematic here so I'm gonna speed it up uh, <laughs> um, what do you do with the rest of it yeah I was expecting a little bit more time out of that battery god damn you the part that has a piston sticking out is going to go down and out. So that means the flat section goes in like that. Push her in. And then attach this little section. It just screws right in. Do not screw it in tight. Just quickly put her on. So on. Alright, bag business. I gotta uh, hurry this up because... Um, yeah, yeah, the camera decided that it was out of room on the damn card. Um, so I'm going to quickly try to finish this up, um, assuming that uh, it's even recording here. I hope you are. Anyway, hopefully it is. <laughs> um, I'm not sure where exactly it cut off. Um, again, just quickly do it in case that it chopped earlier. That uh, whole piston section just slides in with the... Uh, the little washer, that two-piece washer section that's pointing that way, as well as a little nub pointing that way. Screw on the bottom works or whatever it is that they call it. There we go. And then you put the filter on, just kind of fits right on. And then you put on the swivel before you look like an idiot. With the section down. And 
and then screw her straight on. Again, do not tighten it down very hard, just kind of ease her in. Uh, the milling does not match up on mine because I only hand tighten. It doesn't make any difference in the end. So that's the HBR. Uh, we've gone through the entire gun. Um, not really anything to this gun. It's really easy to work on. Like I said, as long as you don't tighten the shit out of this, it's all toolless. Um, you can get to the poppet valve, the, uh, the rammer, the whole rammer housing, bolt, LPR, HPR, completely toolless. Uh, so what does that leave that you actually have to open this gun up for? Uh, switching eyes, messing with wires, messing with your trigger, or switching out your trigger. Um, you'd need tools to get off the grips, obviously. And um, if you're ever having problems with your Noid, then there you go. Get this thing sat back in, and the gun is back together. So yeah, that's the, uh, the uh, I almost said the Creed, <laughs> the Cyborg RX. Um, been really happy with the gun. Like I said, it's efficient, really efficient. Um, off at 6845, shooting at 300 FPS, you're looking at probably a case. Um, it's quiet, uh, especially for a sack tube pop it, smooth. Um, I consider it to be reliable. A lot of people have, uh, say otherwise, but they're usually talking about the, uh, the first ones that came out, which had the brass hammer. Uh, as you probably saw on mine, I have a stainless steel hammer. Um, if you don't know what brass looks like, it's kind of like a gold-ish color. Uh, if you have that, then you saw have a Gen 1 hammer. But they were giving out free ones way back in the day, so I don't know why whoever it is that hooked you up with that gun, or why you yourself did not send it in and uh, get it replaced. Either way, even with the Gen 1 hammers, they were still working well enough for most. A um, couple little quirks with it, I guess... Um, but in general, uh, it's a great performing gun. I consider it to be rock solid, reliable. Uh, not a lot that can go wrong with it. And um, yeah, uh, quite possibly one of my favorite guns. Uh, I don't think it outdoes the Quest. I'm still really happy with my old Quest. But um, as far as things go, I'm really happy with the Cyborg. Um, you know, it, I call it the jack of all trades marker. It's not the absolute easiest gun to work on, but it's really damn easy. Uh, it's not the smoothest, but it's pretty damn smooth. It's not the quietest, but it's pretty quiet. It's not the smoothest, but it's pretty smooth. Uh, you know, there's always, no, I mean, it's efficient, but not the most efficient. You know, you always have a gun that is good at that and that, but it's not so great in this and this. And um, performance-wise, this thing's good in just about everything. It doesn't really have any downsides as far as performance. Its main downsides were, um, my my opinion of the shitty barrel and uh, the crappy trigger but and you know I like to nitpick the ASA and scratching up the grips and whatever else and requiring requiring a, uh, a wrench to get this HPR going but um, in general uh, it's a trouble free gun um, they're selling them used for like 400 bucks you might even find them cheaper um, what do you want 400 bucks oh man you know, uh, I shoot this thing over the Ego, uh, E11, obviously, any Ego. Um, I, it's probably the best, in my opinion, stack tube poppet uh, ever, 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 ever made. Um, and, you know, I shoot it over the Victory. It was my wife's Victory, and now it's gone. Um, love the Mark series, but I'm not sure if I'm, you know, after this gun, it's really spoiled me. Uh, I got almost as smooth as the Victory, quieter than the Victory, easier maintenance than the Victory, requiring less maintenance than the Victory, more efficient than the Victory, um, has better grips than the Victory, or at least the Gen 1s that I had, which had panels. Um, it's just, you know, <laughs> the Victory, basically what it wins out on is being macaline list, which is nice, I guess, and um, a little bit smoother. That's it. Um, everything else goes to the cyborg. Um, egos, everybody's gonna fanboy on the egos, but whatever. Um, Ego 11's still a solid gun, but I would shoot this over it. Um, I like this gun a lot better. Uh, I like it better than the Legend, even though the Legend is a tank, but that's all it's good for. You know, it's not really a great performing gun, but for the price and everything else it is. So, um, I'm happy. That's, uh... My basic rundown of the cyborg. Sorry about the chop. I'm hoping that I'm not talking for 10 minutes here while it's not recording and making an ass out of myself. Um, and yeah.
There she is. Now if I can find the off button. There you go. 